part two of Introduction to Congruences. Before you watch this video, you should watch the Introduction to Congruences, part one, as well as the video about modular inverses. At this moment, I'd like you to pause the video and then read the theorem, and then I'll talk about it. So we're trying to solve the congruence AX congruent to B mod M. And all the examples that we've done so far in the previous video had unique solutions. But it's possible that we have multiple solutions, and it's also possible that we have no solutions. And we want to find out when that happens. So we need to find the greatest common divisor between the A and M, between the coefficient of the variable X and the modulus, and call that D. If D is a divisor of B, divides evenly into B, then there are exactly D solutions mod M. And the formulas below give you the solutions. Don't worry about that too much. I'll show you exactly how that works. So the examples that I've shown you previously, the greatest common divisor was 1, which means there's exactly one solution, and we know how to solve that problem. But what if the greatest common divisor is larger than 1? Let's take a look at some examples. OK, so notice the greatest common divisor between the x coefficient and the mod is 2. If 2 divides into this number, there's two solutions. If 2 doesn't, then there's no solutions. Since 2 does divide into that number, here's what you can do. Divide through all three coefficients by 2, and we've got x congruent to 3 mod 4. OK, so we started with a congruence mod 8. We now have a congruence mod 4. That's one solution, and I said there were two. Whatever the greatest common divisor is, that's how many solutions. And here's how you get them. We want to think of things that are congruent to 3 mod 4 and different mod 8. So in other words, 3 and 3 plus 4 is 7. Those are really the same value, mod 4, but different mod 8. And those are the two solutions. So you start with the one solution you found with the reduced mod, and add the reduced mod on, and you get another solution. If d was 7, you would add that reduced mod in 6 more times to get the other 6 solutions. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have 2x congruent to 7 mod 8. The greatest common divisor is 2 between the x coefficient and the mod. We can't divide 7 by 2. We're stuck. We can't find an inverse of 2 mod 8 because it has no multiplicative inverse if those two values are not relatively prime. In other words, GCD of 1. So this one has no solution. 6x congruent to 9 mod 27. The greatest common divisor between 6 and 27 is 3. And that does divide into 9. So we're good to go. We've got 2x congruent to 3 now mod 9. You can only do these divisions, again, if it divides evenly into it. We don't want to end up with fractions. But now we don't have a solution yet. How do we solve 2x congruent to 3 mod 9? Well, just as we did before, we know 1 adding 9 is congruent to 10 mod 9, which is 5 times 2. So if I multiply both sides of that congruence by 5, I'll get 10x congruent to 15 mod 9. Then I'm going to reduce. 10 becomes 1, mod 9, and 15 becomes 6, mod 9. Now don't forget, I said the divisor is 3 means there's three solutions, so here's how you get them. You got the first one, add the mod, reduce mod, 9, on, and you get 15, add that 9 on again, you get 24, mod 27. You stop when you get to three solutions, because we said there were three. If you added 9 on again to the 24, you would get 33, which is exactly the same thing as 6, mod 27. So there are three, new, three different solutions, mod 27. Now I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. So all three values are divisible by 5. We've got 3x congruent to 5, mod 16. We need the inverse of 3 mod 16. So 1 is 17, I'm adding 16 on, and I got 33, which is 3 times 11, mod 16, right? So I'm going to multiply by 11. I got 33x, which is the same as 1x, congruent to 55, mod 16. Now I reduce. 33 is the same as 1, 
55 mod 16 is the same as 7 mod 16. And we have, we know that the greatest common divisor is 5. We expect 5 solutions. So the first one is going to be the 7 we found. Then we add 16 on to get the next one. So 7 and 16, we get 23, and then 39, and then 55, and then 71. And if we added 16 again, we get 87, but that's greater than the mod 80. And we already have our five, five solutions. And 87 anyway would be reduced again to x congruent to 7. So those are all the solutions. So now you're ready for the, for the project on the near-view process. Good luck. Good luck.